myself again. Uh, I'm Cindy Deng. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering here at MIT. I'm chairing the very last session today. And uh, for the first speaker uh, in this session is Dr. Zong Yo In from the uh, Australian National University. He's going to talk to us about liquid carrier for hydrogen fuel. Welcome. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, the topic I want to share this, this afternoon is the liquid carriers for hydrogen fuel. Actually, it's a methanol. Uh, we do, did some research to how to convert the methanol to pure hydrogen fuel. My name is Zong Yu Yin. I'm from Australian National University, I'm from the city of Canberra. It's not Melbourne, it's not Sydney. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, my, my research belongs to B because we, we, our conference is A plus B, my exclude. Collider nanocatalyst. catalyst, this is a real name for the methanol storable hydrogen fuel. I want to introduce some background, and uh, also discuss the possible alternative, sustainable way, and the scalable cloud synthesis, and the solar hydrogen fuel from methanol. Okay, this is, uh, yeah, this reaction maybe, yeah, it's, it's uh, well known to the world. This is, uh, I think, is one of the main hydrogen fuel generation now in the industrial way. So the so-called methanol stream reforming. Uh, when we look at this reaction, it's very interesting. It requires several, several parameters. For example, it needs a high pressure. It needs some temperature above 250 degrees, and also it has some carbon dioxide reduction uh, uh, emission. So I, I ask me as myself several questions. So here, the pressure is very high. Can we uh, use ambient pressure to replace this so-called high pressure? I, I also can we develop some process at room temperature, and <coughs> it's possible to do the some process without carbon dioxide emission. Uh, yeah, this is the, kind of taking the three questions to myself. Uh, I, my group want to develop some, some possible study to develop, de develop so-called AP, ambient pressure, room temperature, and carbon dioxide emission-free process to, to convert a, a methanol to hydrogen fuel. Actually, when we look at this half, we found this, this reaction is very famous uh, for, because for, for the water splitting. I think water splitting, some people use uh, uh, Methanol as a sacrificial agent to harvest the exciting holes to, to, to realize electron hole separation, then the electron can go to for the photo reduction process to, for hydrogen generation in the water splitting. In the other hand, if we, if, we, if, we, uh, if we look at it from environmental decontamination, this process can uh, imitate uh, some, this methanol, people can use the methanol as a organic waste. Uh, people want to develop some photocatalyst to, do, to remove, the, to convert methanol to other products, so-called, say, photodegradation. And uh, on the other hand, uh, actually, methanol can, can be realized from CRR, so-called carbon dioxide reduction reaction. So actually, yeah, my group also do some work here. But today, I just focus on, on this part. I want to answer this question, we can do this or not. Uh, yeah, bring that question, yeah, we're saying, can we do this way? We just take out, we just use the chemical bonding, rebounding to realize hydrogen fuel with, from the methanol without any carbon dioxide emission. So we write this formula here. The, this, actually, this product, so-called byproduct, but this is a useful formaldehyde. And the formaldehyde is easily to liquefy as a very low pressure. And if we look at this reaction, it's a closed loop without any carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide emission. Yeah, this is what, what my group is pursuing now. So then question come out, what catalyst we should, we should, we should develop? First, we, we consider MgO, magnesium oxide. Why this material, you know, MgO, Mg, uh, this element is quite rich in, in our planet and oxygen everywhere. So we develop some, a so-called a chemical colloidal synthesis to synthesize large scale so, uh, uh, scalable MGO nanoparticles. So the, the one thing is surfactant issue. So for the for the colloidal 
since it's, we always had surfactant, then we remove surfactant easily if you use oxygen plasma. The good news is this because this oxide. If you apply oxygen plasma, there's no problem for the catalyst. Uh, yeah, we really certainly this is demonstrated so-called a chemical colloid since it's so-called scalable because we can synthesize in one part reaction uh, gram. So in the lab, this is a large scale. You can call it scalable. And yeah, we do some causation, the TN, and uh, this is a polycrystal, I think. It's a porous structure. The interesting thing, uh, when, we, when we first see the blue color from here, we are very excited and saying, oh, this is actually it's not a semiconductor. It's the, the bank up is about a 7.8 EV. How come blue color come out? So the common sense is that, oh, there's defects, uh, defects from the energy level between the real origin and bank gap. So the question come out, can we, have this, can we use this so-called <coughs> defects level generate a new gap to harvest solar or not? Yeah, this is a very straightforward question. And uh, we can see we have, we have two absorb, uh, obvious absorption peak here. This is the UV, maybe we don't like, we like this one. But actually, this study tells us this energy level doesn't harvest solar. This is the bad news. The good news, this catalyst works at the room temperature to convert metal to hydrogen. So then uh, what happened? Why, why this one doesn't work, but this still can work for the metal to hydrogen generation? So oh, this is just to tell us, oh, this peak, this come from oxygen vacancy. It's not a magnetic vacancy, it come from oxygen vacancy. This is, the, this is evidence. So we, we try to study the uh, performance and also stability. Uh, we can find uh, after, two, after, after two days working, that's cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, we found performance increase with time. So that means this, this calculator is quite stable not degree with time. We also uh, did one control sample without catalyst. We found that performance is very low with, compared with this performance. So this data to us, the performance comes from really for the catalyst, it's not from methanol itself. And after we actually found the MGU study is, is, very, is very maintained. That's again, let's see the catalyst is very stable. A straightforward question for me, for myself, is how, how, can, how, how to compare also result if we compare the commercial oxide, commercial magnesium oxide, commercial titanium oxide, and commercial titanium oxide. So we also did some control sample. We found that still our synthesized material give the best stability. Even the titanium oxide is better at the beginning, but at long time, titanium oxide will degrade. The surface will, will be, uh, uh, be de deactivized. Uh, because we, our target is so-called carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide free. There's no carbon dioxide emission at all. So we, want, we, we need evidence, right? So here you can see this is the control. If carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide should have peak here. How from our products, we don't have peak for carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. It's so-called carbon oxide free. And this here, we want to study oh, this peak. Where's the bank gap for the MGO? We found that after UPS, we found that 7.8 EV. This is the very very common data for MGO. We also started to discuss the mechanism for the methanol to hydrogen generation. Uh, from here, I want to share again this uh, UV uh, spectrum meter. You, you can see from here, we have two peaks. We should have two peaks, two energy gaps. But it's not original band gap, it's two gap. However, this gap doesn't work. Doesn't harvest solar. Why? That's evidence, because we try, when we change the shine, the, the light, uh, excitation wavelength, we found that this wavelength doesn't work at all. That's no hydrogen come out. We only ha have to apply UV. So that means this one does not harvest solar. But good news, the trap, this is all trap vacancy. Actually, the traps has a good application. Trap can separate electron hole. So electron easily turn into trap. Then the electron can do the reduction job. The hole will be separate. Then there's also good news for, for trap. Even it doesn't harvest solar. So on the full UV, we only uh, we re received a good uh, performance. This is a rate 320 micromolar per gram per hour. Then when I take a look at uh, look, uh, look look at the the the, the disadvantage uh, again, we still I leave a table here. So for industrial part, uh, metanol stream forming. Uh, so across right, but here scalable right, industrial part certainly scalable. So for MGO work, we can take here, take here, take here because 
ambient pressure, room temperature, and the carbon dioxide free, but it's not solar. So we think we ask our question, is there any new catalyst to, to take here? So this is our next work. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, when we think about it, because we have some experience for 2D materials research quite long, maybe seven years ago, we started 2D to, to materials. Uh, two, ma uh, two main, two different methods. One is uh, top down, so called from bark to one single layer. We developed the so called leafing intercalation exfoliation. So, this is a very good method. We can, we can uh, receive single layer materials uh, large scale. We can make, make many devices, even wearable devices. And also, we try to do some uh, optical electronic study. We use a tape, scotch tape. We can receive single layer. This is for so called phototransistor in the world, it's the first one, I think. And also, we try to think about so, how can, uh, can we do the scalable? Uh, research to synthesize 2D materials. Yes, we, we, we tried seven years ago, we, we, we tried the first one. Uh, we synthesize 2D materials, uh, you use a special ligands as a templating, is a copper monosulfide. Uh, unfortunately, this material is not single layer, you can see it's taken together, but it's good performance for lithium battery, lithium iron battery. Second, we tried last year, yeah, we, we demonstrated we can synthesize, again, use a chemical collagen synthesis, to synthesize one T prime tungsten sulfide. Why we, we pursue one T prime tungsten sulfide? Because this material is metallic. Metallic is a good catalyst for the HGR, so called hydrogen evolution reaction. And also, I tried to, to synthesize, actually, this, this equipment comes from MIT MTL, my, my co supervisor, Hesus, yeah, has equipment. We grow a hydrogen doped MOO tree onto the diamond. The diamond is the hydrogen. Hydrogen treated is so called a 2D whole gas. We can rely on good performance, transistor very stable. I mean, until here, we still don't know how to sense a single layer large scale. So that's why it's still a challenge. Recently, I, by collaboration with the Curtin University in Australia, we found a new strategy to can synthesize single layer large scale 2D materials. But again, I tell you, I can share with you, there's a ligand because there's always aggregation, frankly. But but when we check the AFM carefully, this is really a single layer. This is not uh, NM, it's a PM, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Uh, so the second is, yeah, it's, it's uh, almost uh, a single layer, and the absorption kind of from here is uh, climbing up. That's what I mean, the wide range absorption to the solar, I think. Uh, this is the yeah, basic characterization, anxiety, Raman, XPS, double conform, it, it is uh, almost two. So that's next. Because next the huge data come. Okay, sorry, too fast. Go. Uh, because for 2D materials, transition metal, transition uh, metal dicarbonate, people would know to discuss fly urge, urge the structure. So so called M O urge B B is a blank. This is a purple color. It's M O uh, urge, and M O urge with the monomer. Monomer is a dangling uh, sulfur, and M O M O urge with the monomer plus dimer. You can see that the monomer is the a dimer, but it's a dangling. And also, yeah, there's the kind of the other two, the sulfur edge with a, mo uh, with a uh, monomer eye dimer, and also sulfur edge with monomer only, kind of monomer. So we, now, in this field, people accept the five times of uh, edge types. So the question come out. So for metal hydrogen generation, the conversion was a process. What edge is favored? So this is the calculation by my poster. So we propose, we propose two way it, it, is, it is possible. The first way is P1, 2, 4, 6. That's in the P1, 3, 4, 3, 5, 6. A P1 is the same. Why is the same? Because P1 is an absorption. Methanol absorption to TMD. And the P6 is also the same because there's a desorption, right? The difference is the scission, scission, cutting. The scission of the edge bonding from well. So we propose the first is P2. The first cutting come from OH. The second cutting come from CH. So, so, so called P2, P4, 1, 6. The second uh, uh, assumption we, we, we're saying maybe cutting come from CH first, then cutting from OH, the so called P3, P5, the two way. But we don't know which one is real happen, really happening. So, this, this is interesting. So, we try to calculate the five. We, we know we have five different edges, right? We try every edge, we calculate. Uh, two, 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 uh, two parts, two parts, because they one all the same, six all the same. So we just, uh, yeah, th this will split the branch. So after calculation, we found, we found this way is a, is a favored way. 
But however, we need evidence, right? This is calculation only. We try to do the ACTM to check is this one or not. We can study the, the edge of use ACTM. Uh, so yeah, this, this based on calculation, we found that we should follow this way. That means the first session come from OH, and the second session come from one of the CH. So the two protons come together and form the hydrogen gas. And this is the reaction. So the methanol to hydrogen to formaldehyde. Uh, this is a pure hydrogen. There's no carbon dioxide emission. So this, this is unpublished data. So my post is yeah, right in the paper. So you can see the performance now is two times already. However, the other thing is that we can use the solar. Now it's not a full UV. This is very uh, good breakthrough. And also many people ask you, how about surfactant itself, it works or not? We really do the surfactant itself. We can find surfactant pure, surfactant with methanol together. That's not performance at all. You can see it's very low. So the performance really comes from the TMD. Okay, this is concentration uh, dependence. The interesting uh, phenomenon we found that we do three cycles. Why we do three cycles? Because we found first cycle running, we found the saturation issue come out. Because I have been, we're not increased anymore after six, six hours. So we, we guess maybe my catalyst died. Maybe catalyst need rest. So we open our reactor, then put overnight the second day, re, re, redo that again. We found the, the performance come back again. So so-called refreshable. But here, maybe it's not obvious. When we change to the, uh, the, the rate, the hydrogen generation rate is very obvious. You can see the rate around 600, right? The sixth first cycle, second cycle. So we call this refreshable uh, by the very simple calculation. We found that it can be turned by 99%. This is very good because normally people know transcendental dicoxygen is not stable, right? In water splitting, right? So I didn't do the water splitting, right? Because we know it. But why methanol works? Yeah, we know alcohol is what alcohol, alcohol has reduction uh, ability, but alcohol has a little bit oxidation ability. But alcohol reduction probability is larger than oxidation. That's why the sulfide will not be oxidized. So then uh, let's let's come back to the to the table. The interesting, right? I just uh, my concern is oh, can we use a solar? Yes, the answer is yes. So it can be take all and also increase one more here, refreshable. Right? One more. So, so that's why I think this is, so, so my personal level, single layer TMD for, for methanol to hydrogen generation is a good title. Okay, uh, yeah, that's a uh, conclusion for the for the catalytic hydrogen generation with the solar from liquid carrier. So liquid carrier is organic, liquid carrier is methanol, it's not water. Water doesn't work. So this uh, we develop scalable synthesis right, for TMD, for MGO, and we, we receive encouraging MTH efficiency, right? And also, it's really sustainable. Why? APRT uh, carbon dioxide free and the solar harvesting and refreshable. Mm -hmm. I need to thank to my group. Yeah, my group is a little big, but uh, my group is still growing. Uh, so, and uh, I will, uh, yeah, appreciate my uh, funding, sup supporting. Yeah, this is ANU. ANU give me, yeah, a good funding support. And also, they this from a company from ACT company and also this from a Australian <laughs> government. Thank you very much. Uh, 610 micromole per gram per hour. 